Uh, this snake was found about maybe a quarter of a mile from here on a trail. It was found um, about three days ago, about n roughly 9 o'clock at night or so. Um, one of our visitors was walking the trail, um, and actually um, brushed his foot against this snake. The snake was coiled. He didn't see it until he brushed his foot against it, and then he saw the motion, and he immediately backed up. Luckily, the snake didn't try to strike him. And then the snake crawled off the trail about five meters into the forest. He continued on his walk, and he came back about 30 minutes later, and the snake had crawled back onto the trail and had coiled up exactly where it was before he had bothered it. And that's actually common, I've found. I've been snake hunting snakes since I was about five years old and keeping them all of my life. <clears throat> and that's actually quite common. In, in, in the field, if you're out, and you see a snake and it gets disturbed, and you come back an hour, half an hour, a couple hours later, depending on the time of the day, but most of the time it's right back where you had disturbed it. Because it was there for a reason. Maybe it was waiting for some prey. <coughs> this particular snake is a, you know, it's a sit and wait predator. Um, I mean, it does actually crawl around, but generally when they're looking for prey, it's, it's, it's in a coil. Another interesting thing about the snake is that the, it's primarily nocturnal, which means they're mostly active at night. So during, this, during the day, if you come upon a fertile ant, not all the time, but most of the time, it's sitting in a coil, and it's probably asleep, or it's certainly kind of calm and resting. And during the day, um, if you will go near it, as long as you don't hit it or brush up against it, you can practically walk right by these things, and they don't even, they don't really disturb you because they're, they're sort of resting. Unless, of course, you stepped on it or something. And that's not, you know, 100% of the time, but most of the time. Whereas at night, they're much more active. They're oftentimes prowling moving from place to place and coiling up and waiting and seeing if there's anything and then they'll move on to the next little hunting spot uh, which is good for people actually because we're mostly active during the day and they're mostly active at night so unless we disturb them most of the time they're going to leave us alone during the day as well um, this snake uh, will let go probably in the next couple of days we don't keep them here as pets or anything like that we just use um, a snake like this as a uh, educational. Uh, it's an educational opportunity for our students that come to learn about the wildlife here. So we'll let him go very soon, and he'll go about his business and or her business. And uh, maybe we'll see her again, or maybe not. I would say that these are relatively common here at Be Free. Not that you see them, because sometimes months and months can go by without seeing them. But as a herpetologist, I've done some some work on them and. Um, they're definitely around. <laughs> uh, they're just very, you know, they're, they're just very uh, secretive and very camouflaged. So you just may not see them, but they're, they're here. If you're out in the jungles of Belize or anywhere in Belize and you see a snake like this if you're walking on a trail, um, the best thing to do is to give it a wide girth. Um, if you walked up on a snake like this, what you don't want to do is freeze and hope that it goes away. If you walk up in a snake like this, what you want to do is immediately back away from it as quickly as you can. And then if you're trying to get in the opposite direction, you know, if you're trying to get where the snake's blocking you, then you just give yourself a wide, you give the snake a wide girth, you walk around it, and then you continue on your way. He's, he's pissed off. <laughs> He's, uh, he's ready to, to bite. But I would be too if someone was flopping me around on the ground. You know, you know this snake has actually quite a v variation of color. Um, some of them have more purplish or pinkish, where this one is sort of cream colored. Um, they vary sort of different colors of browns and tans. They're all generally shaped like this. They all have triangles or saddles on their sides. And they're very cryptic or camouflage. They blend in very well the environment. Here we've got him on some cut grass, so he's relatively easy to see, but if this snake crawls into the forest floor with all the leaves and sticks, they blend in so well they're almost impossible to see. Um, these are live bears. They don't lay eggs, they have live young, and um, a large a large fur lance, one much bigger than this, can lay up to a hundred babies. Um, a female this size, she's reproductive age, if she was 
pregnant and gave birth, she'd probably have between 8 and 20 young, I would say. These guys don't eat plants. Only, Only frogs, birds, frogs. frogs, lizards, S other snakes sometimes. Yeah. Other snakes. Now, a lot of snakes will eat fertilants, right? Oh, yeah. Blacktail. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the master. That's the, yeah. Blacktail loves these. Well, you see that? You just yeah. follow that thing. Uh, king snakes, mm -hmm. the red and yellow black ones, mm -hmm. not the coral, but the, the big one. Mm -hmm. How eat these? Um, it's a beautiful creature. You know, it's definitely an animal that should be shown a lot of respect. You know, most snakes, most people have the snakes, the, the, the philosophy that only, the only good snake is a dead snake, um, which is not the case because snakes are a very important part of our environment. They've been around for a very long time. And like every other creature in the natural world, they serve an important role. As humans, one way to think about how important a role they serve is that they are a major predator of, of rats and, and rodents around the world. Not just the furlands, I'm talking about snakes in general. Um, supposedly, rodents eat a, roughly 20% of, er, of all the grain that we produce before it even gets to market. Snakes are a major predator around the world of rodents. So if the snakes are gone, the rodents are going to expand, and they become a, much more of a, a problem for us. And of course, rodents are serious carriers of disease. In fact, the bubonic plague was carried by rodents. Um, so snakes, though some of them are deadly venomous, like this one, most are not. And they play a very, very important role in the sort of natural order or food, or the web of our environment. So it doesn't mean you have to love them. But if you see one, it's best just to leave it alone and go on your way. Okay, I'm just going to pick them up, put them back in the bucket, try not to get bit. Ha, ha, ha. Put them back where she belongs in the cage. If you pick them up really quickly off the ground, they immediately try to find their sense of balance, which in this case is right on the hook. So that's why that worked so well. But I spent too much time talking about it. A happy snake is a snake in a bucket. <laughs> a happy snake handler is a snake in a bucket. <laughs>